Howdy all of you delicious people, I'm here today to review Invincible Episode 7. So, I would say that this episode would probably have to be called the payoff episode. Uh, we've had a few things build uh, within uh, this show, and we, in this episode, have a payoff. It's not 100% resolving of uh, everything, uh, but... Uh, it just kind of gets us to like a a kind of nice it it kind of has a nice uh, little finish to transition us into another part of story. I think with this episode, like at first we were just kind of like, you know what? There's something really wrong with Omni Man, and I think. Like, Mark or somebody is just going to have to take him down. There's something wrong with him. Like, I think that he's actually a villain all along. But, I think in this episode, you start to go, like, well... Maybe Omni-Man has a reason for why he's doing the things that he's doing. Like, a lot of people could just think that, oh, no, like, Omni-Man is just losing his mind. And, like, we have it to where, like, he is just going crazy. No. Maybe there's a whole reason behind everything that's going on. And we don't even realize it until we get this story. What I am quite possibly paranoiously thinking now is that... Maybe with either Omni-Man or quite possibly Mark is we're going to find out that this could quite possibly be uh, maybe just like the Truman Show kind of situation and that everything isn't what it actually seems. Uh, and so we have it to where uh, it could quite possibly that uh, Deborah could have been playing an act all this time. Uh, Cecil could really be uh, wanting absolute control of everyone. And what would be all of the best ways to be able to do that? And maybe then eventually Omni-Man finally figured that out. And you never know. Like... You never know until Omni Man starts speaking and saying those words, and then you're like, "Oh my God, that's amazing!" Uh, and we never actually get to that part in this episode. That's the saddest thing. Uh, like we never get to the true reveal. Hence, why I can kind of theory craft and and paranoia and and whichever. Uh, but I know there might be some people also out there that have read the books and like, oh, yeah, I know exactly what's going on and blah, 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 blah. Uh, and I'm going to spoil for other episodes and ruin it or whatever. Like, no, I'm just trying to like uh, in my head, trying to figure out and uh, think of what's going to happen in the future. Uh, but anyways. Going on to this episode, we have uh, two stories that kind of come to a close. We can even call like Mark's story uh, seemingly almost coming to a uh, like a close a little bit because we have a tour Mark in this episode kind of doesn't know where he's going. And it seems that all the stuff that he had kind of threw off to the side because he was a superhero, maybe all those things past this point will no longer matter at some point because I think maybe Mark is just going to end up just flushing his entire uh, life in the toilet just because of what is to happen within quite possibly the next episode with Omni-Man explaining everything. So I don't know, like, there is a lot of possibilities here, and I think that that's what the best part of it is, of it is, is like, I can't wait till the next episode. Uh, and so that is going to be great to just be so like, uh, I can't wait for the next episode. What's going to happen? 
who's who's gonna be what? What's gonna? I want to know the. I want to know the truth. Like I want to know. Um, but then again, I am happy to wait for the next episode. So with that said, I think that's all that I could say in a cryptic version of this episode. It's kind of one of those where you watch this episode uh, excited about the following week's episode because it has like a giant cliffhanger that uh, that kind of gets you more excited about what the possibilities are with next week's episode because of uh, especially uh, also what ha- what happens to Robot um, besides just Omni Man story. So, with that said, I think it's about time to go into spoilers. Uh, one thing that I could say is like the Mahler twins, like if they were characters that kind of felt like a waste of time uh, before, like I think now, like. They actually had a prominent role in this episode. Uh, The Guardians of the Galaxy, they didn't really have much of any role in this episode besides getting drunk for the whatever fourth, fifth time by now. Uh, Like, God, like, that is a team that honestly just does nothing. And, like, we had it to her in, like, the early, like, in the early portions of this show, we had them do, like, a lot more. But then eventually, like, when they were the teen team, man, did they do a lot. Uh, but then, like, eventually we just have them kind of just here, there, and then just, like, meh. Like, they're just going uh, back and getting drunk, and that's about it. Like, man, we need to have this team come back in, like, to the... F- like, what is the point of the Guardians of the Globe if you don't have them being used uh, a lot more often? Uh, but anyways, with that said, uh, let's go into this episode. Let's talk it out. Uh, just really a fun episode for the most point. Um, so let's get into it. Let's go into spoiler time, spoiler time. It's about that time again to spoil this episode. So we have it to where mark is coming back from uh from his trip to this college we end up having mark trying to talk to amber and immediately uh we have to where amber uh cranks up the volume on the music to where mark is realizing that he's not going to be able to talk to amber so we have a tour Mark wants to go and just tell Amber his secret because he really likes her. And so once he tries to, we have a tour Amber slams the door on his face before he can get the words out that he's invincible. So we have Amber who ends up going up to her room to have Mark show up in invincible gear and say, hey, I'm invincible. And Amber's like, well... Yeah, I knew that. I knew I've been I known that for weeks, but that doesn't change anything. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, so like him revealing to you his secret doesn't change anything because yeah, he still lied, but he lied to protect you, but that doesn't matter because he still lied. <laughs> I'm like, dude, like his secret is like really important but to you it's no it's not like it's just like it doesn't matter it just mattered that he lied it's like so if he would have came out in day one said like yeah like uh just letting you know i love you and i am a superhero like you would have been like no there's no way and then if he would have showed you his power Like, you would have just been like, oh, well, yeah, that's great, but, like, I still uh, want you to, like, be, like, be here for me and whatever. I don't know, like, there's there's something about that that just kind of, like, bugs me, where it's just kind of like, isn't it good that he came clean? Like, couldn't you have got him, given him brownie points for at least coming clean about things? Uh, but I don't know. Anyways. Going on into this episode, we have it to where Robot 
is going and finally showcasing what the heck that he's been doing with the Mahler twins for so long. So we have it to where Robot seems to have a number of different variations of himself. And so it seems that the robot that we uh, that we've seen with the Guardians of the Globe, like is just a copy of uh, a thing that uh, that isn't actually the real robot. So we end up finding out that robot actually is in a uh, like a. Uh, a test tube of sorts. His human uh, body is in some like test tube like pod thing of sorts, uh, which is to be able to uh, walk around on these robotic uh, legs of sorts. And so we have it to where the clone is otherwise in perfect shape to... Uh, be able to now be having his brain from uh, the real robot on to transferring to this cloned uh, uh, Rex Explode uh, clone. So we end up finding out that Robot had plenty of clones of himself in this vehicle and cuz when we end up having the brain transfer and we have a uh, Robot's clone being implemented with a with a CPU in his head like the Terminator we end up having now, a uh, new robot, which I'll just call robot now, we end up having robot turn on the Mahler twins, and we end up finding out that there were several versions of robot within this uh, truck, and so they end up coming out, and the Mahler twins end up trying to taking, uh, the Mahler twins end up taking out these robot versions, but then eventually we end up seeing that robot uh with this truck like the truck turns into like a transformer like thing and we end up seeing this giant variation of robot uh through from this truck to now a big gigantic robot so we end up having the Mahler tip the Mahler twins scrambling uh to like a uh, rocket raccoon like take a bunch of parts and stuff like that from uh, their from their devices and uh, cramming this all together to make one gun to fire at uh, at the real true like uh, like human robot and so we have it to where the Mala twins or the one of the Mahler twins fire this gun at at robot and the uh, the truck robot ends up diving out of the way and getting hit by this gun and so human robot says well like obviously with the tech that you assembled to put that gun together you're not going to be able to get another shot to hit me and so We end up having it to where we eventually have Robot who is to get a call that he is needed back at uh, the Guardians of the Globe headquarters. And so we just have uh, Robot taking uh, Robot with his truck robot. Uh, we end up having them just flying off. And so... We have Robot in exchange for this whole procedure. We have Robot giving the Mahler twins a, a schematic for a collar that should be able to control uh, the immortal. 
because they are going to try to bring back the immortal back to life. And they're going to like Frankenstein him back to life, which I thought was really interesting. Like every little bit about these episodes seems to be here and there, like kind of talking and bringing back something like a Frankenstein ish like thing. Like they bought, they, uh, like they were trying to hit, uh, they were trying to hit, uh, immortal to make him come back to life. And, like, one of the Mahler twins was trying to hit the immortal back to life, and and we have it to one of the other Mahler twins is like, dude, we should use, like, electricity, because that brought back, like, Frankenstein. And it's like, dude, like, this should work fine. And so we have it to where immortal comes back to life, or the immortal ends up coming back to life and ends up ripping off the collar that... Uh, the Mahler twins had made and then the Mahler twins realized oh like I guess Robot gave us crappy schematics like he just wanted us to bring back uh, the immortal and that's all that we were going to get out of that whole deal uh, so they got kind of uh, shafted out of that deal so now we have it within this episode so let's get back uh Let's get back to things. So Mark ends up going out to see uh, Adam Eve to just kind of talk about things. Uh, we have it to where Mark is kind of mentioning how his life is kind of in the dumps. And Adam Eve is just like, well, like, look at me. Like, I went out on my own and, like, I'm doing way much more better good than I was uh with the life I had before this. Like, she has saved much more people, and, like, she is just... I She is just much more productive. So... We have to now talk about Omni-Man. So, in the very beginning of, uh, of the last episode... Or, in the very uh, other episode... We have Deborah confronting Omni Man, wanting the truth. And so, uh, in the very beginning of this episode, we have it toward Deborah no longer trusts Omni Man to the point of her telling him that she needs to leave the house. Or that Deborah is telling Omni Man that he needs to leave. He needs to no longer come back to this home because, like, this relationship is really on the rocks. So, Omni Man just goes and flies through his home and just goes off, like, as if, like, he's basically telling her, like, dude, I do not give a single F. Like, I'm just gonna fly out of this house. I just don't care. Like, fly through the house because I just whatever so we have omni man who is putting on his uh, uh omni man suit and so we have it to where omni man is at everest and he is trying to think of how exactly two word things to mark he is coming up with like, Mark, uh, like, I need to tell you, uh, I need to tell you the truth. Like, I need to tell you what happened with me and the Guardians of the Globe. And so while Omni-Man is trying to come up with the words to tell Mark, we end up finding out that Omni-Man is not even anywhere close to Mark. That Mark is just, like, a million miles away. So... We have it to where uh, Omni Man is like, well, hey, like I think it's about time that I should actually go and find my son and actually like talk to him. And so we have it to where Omni Man goes to Mark's best friend William and is asking, like, hey, like where is Mark? And William goes, oh, well, he's with Adam Eve. It's like, well. How about you call him because I need, like, I need him. 
and uh, Mark's phone is either like broken or whatever. And so we have it to where Omni-Man just flies out to get to Mark. And the entire time we have uh, Cecil scrambling the Guardians of the Globe to get to their headquarters. And we end up having Deborah going to Cecil uh, basically like telling him what has happened that she thinks that uh omni man has killed the guardians of the globe and we end up having cecil saying like yeah we've realized the exact same thing and so we end up having cecil trying to stop omni man from getting to mark and so we end up having, like, as Omni-Man is flying to get to Mark, we have it to where they try everything on, in their power to try to take down Mark. They end up, like, shooting with a satellite. They end up shooting down a big beam of, of light that, that is ending up just slowing Mark down, or slowing Omni-Man down to the point of him being really annoyed to the point to where Omni-Man flies into this beam, uh, into this satellite, and ends up, like, tearing it apart and destroying it. And so we end up having it to where right after that, like, Omni-Man goes back to the surface, and so Cecil ends up himself... Uh, like, personally trying to get to Omni-Man, where we end up having it to where Omni-Man tries to get to Cecil, and every single time Cecil ends up teleporting uh, to a different spot here, there, here, 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 here. And so, because we had it to where Omni-Man ends up finding these stealth commandos or whatever, uh, all in his home, and he ends up just ripping apart every single one of them. It looks really, really cool. And so, we have it to where we have Omni-Man that is getting closer and closer to Cecil. Like, at some point, we end up having it to where, uh, like, Cecil even uh, loses a portion of his tie because Omni-Man ends up grabbing it and tearing uh, half of Cecil's tie. So we end up having Cecil going and putting out the next best thing, which is to put out more Reanimen that, uh, that he had found the ability to be able to do from Sinclair. Sinclair is... Uh, seemingly working with Cecil. And so we end up finding out that these uh, Rihanna men are actually just former soldiers that had died that are going to help out their country one last time. Like it's not the same uh, jocks as it was before uh, from the previous episode. No, it's just uh, ex-military people that have died and they are going to help, uh, they're going to help out this government. So we end up seeing Omni-Man fight out these Rihanna men and man, like they're putting in, they are really like, uh, like giving, uh, giving Omni-Man like a real workout. Uh, we end up having them, like, biting on Omni-Man and all kinds of stuff. Like, it's really cool to see this fight out uh, between these Omni-Man and, uh, and not, or between these Reanimen and Omni-Man. It's like a real cool fight out. So, but we have Omni-Man who still just is starting to just easily just tear through uh, these Omni-Men. And so... We have it to where Cecil is like, dude, like, set up the teleporter. Because we have to, like, we have to be able to, like, put out, like, our, like, our best shot. Our Hail Mary. 
So we have this giant, like I would call it like Cthulhu-ish like monster that ends up being sent to where Omni-Man is. Like this gigantic creature of sorts that has like uh, tentacles coming out of its head and all kinds of bizarre things. It looks like a big Cthulhu thing or whatever, like a big, big monster. Uh, so we end up having this bizarre looking thing uh, come into the fray and they are calling it a Hail Mary because that's basically like their last shot. Uh, speaking of shot, we end up also having Omni-Man, when Omni-Man goes and kills all these stealth people that were in his home, we have Omni-Man going out of his way to finding Cecil's second in command and take his spine and snap it uh, to where we have uh, Cecil's second in command mentioning that it's like, well, hey, like, it was an honor working with you, sir. And we have to where Omni-Man is like, who are you talking to? And, and of course, he was talking to Cecil. And Cecil answers uh, what he had said. We have it to where Cecil's second command during there, like, hit a button to uh, detonate a bomb that ended up just, like, doing realistically nothing to Omni-Man. So... We have it to where, like, uh, to where Omni Man is fighting this giant monsterish Hail Mary creature, and he is getting clocked. So we end up having both Mark and Adam Eve kind of uh, hearing this commotion uh, because there's like news helicopters that are made their way there uh, and all kinds of things. So. We have it to where Adam, Eve, and Mark fly to the location of this big battle. And we end up having the news kind of showcasing that Adam and Eve and Mark are making their way there. So we have we have Sisu who ends up calling Adam, Eve, and telling her that she needs to head back to headquarters... Uh, and that also, like, like Deborah was trying to get a hold of her son, but sadly enough, like, Mark made his way to uh, help out Omni Man with this Hail Mary creature. And so we end up having it to where when uh, Mark makes his way to this Hail Mary creature, we end up having the Hail Mary creature like flinging uh, Omni Man to where Mark goes and catches him, and then uh, we have it to where Omni Man says like, "Mark, you're here," and uh, and Mark of course says like, "Well, you mean invincible?" It's like, "Yeah, it's about time that we had a, had a team up to team up together." I'm like, "Yeah, like this is actually pretty cool." I'm like, "We have it to our father and son are like working together side by side." And, like, that's really cool. Like, we get this one cool, like, moment where they're both fighting something off together, uh, which I thought was really awesome. So, we have Adam and Eve who is, like, just, just like, what do I do? <laughs> like, she's just stuck there uh, listening to the people on the phone uh, just kind of telling her that she needs to go away because... We have this thing here where uh, Adam and Eve cannot fight this Hail Mary creature off because the Hail Mary creature was just to take down Omni-Man. And Adam and Eve can't help Mark because really uh, Cecil doesn't know exactly where uh, Mark's allegiance is going to lie to or is going to... like. Where is Omni Man and and Invincible going to like where where is this where is this going to head? So we have it to where Adam and Eve just flies off because she's doing what she's told, and 
So we just have it to where the immortal is just a ape crap crazy. And so he ends up flying off from the Mahler twins to make his way to Omni-Man. He just wants to know where this man is, and that's all that matters. So we have the immortal flying his way to make it to Omni-Man, and this fight out is just awesome. Uh, we have to our Invincible is forced to fight off Hail, Hail Mary. Uh, he ends up going and uh, taking uh, these uh, this electrical, um, or this electrical wire, because he ends up pulling, uh, some of the electrical wire, and he ends up, like, electrocuting, uh, the Hail Mary creature to where eventually he ends up just tying it in the electrical wire, um, because there was some kind of electrical, uh, uh, thing there for him to be able to, to kind of put this, uh, Hail Mary creature down. So, Like, it was kind of interesting to where Hail Mary and Omni-Man, like, this, uh, like, there was a backstory there where evidently, uh, Omni-Man had fought this creature before, and it seems that this time around they had improved, uh, this creature to where, uh, it was a lot harder for Omni-Man to be able to take down. Uh, and like there was a whole backstory about this creature. It was kind of interesting. So anyways, we have it to where the immortal is going and like trying to fight Omni-Man and there's these big punches and it's really cool looking, but we end up having Omni-Man just punching his fist all the way through Omni Man's stomach, and we end up having uh, the immortal going and trying to put his fingers through the eyes of Omni Man. So we have it to where the immortal is trying to make Omni Man blind, and so we end up having it to where Omni Man just takes and swipes his arm all the way through the immortal. To just tear him in half. And so. We end up having it to where Mark is just at a loss. Invincible is just at a loss. Because he's like. Oh my god. Like. Omni-Man had just. Killed. The Immortal. Why? What? What is the reason behind that? And so. We end up having Mark and just utter, just like, uh, uh, all while we end up having at headquarters that, uh, Robot makes his way back to the, uh, he makes his way back to the Guardians of the Globe while waiting to hear word from Cecil and the Guardians of the Globe are watching everything unfold. And so... While Explode is uh, taking a bunch of milk cartons and replacing them all with beer because <laughs> they just have to all get drunk by odd circumstances. We have it to where they were welcoming Monster Girl back from the hospital. Bizarrely, we had it to where Black Samson ended up getting really, really hurt, but that ends up, like, re-kicking back in his powers, whereas Monster Girl ends up just getting hurt and then just has to be, uh, like, welcomed back into the fold once she is, like, perfectly fine. So we have it to where Robot makes his way back to the headquarters and we have it to where Rex explode is like, dude, like you look like a younger version of me. Like, this is gross. Like, this is disgusting. And so we end up having to where Robot explains why he's a younger version of Rex explode because it's like, well, uh, it seems that Monster Girl really 
really connected to Rex Explode, and so that's why Robot decided to um, become a younger version of Rex Explode, um, so on and so forth. So, it seems that we have... Uh, a lot of the people just kind of very confused why Robot is the way he is. Uh, but then Robot kind of explains how, like, he it, he has always been a, uh, a telepathically, like, linked between all the other Robot versions. Uh, to where in this episode we end up having some Robot... Uh, we end up having Robot who kind of malfunctions within this episode... Uh, because, like, they end up kind of severing the link. Uh, but anyways, it seems like everybody's just okay with this bizarre um, transition of a uh, robot now being a real boy. And so we eventually even have, like, Monster Girl ending up holding the hand of Robot uh, within this episode. And so the very last thing that we see is Mark just like very baffled and confused why uh, Omni-Man is killing the immortal. And so we end up having Omni-Man, bloodshot eyes and all, going to Mark and saying like, Mark, we need to talk. And that's how the episode ends. With that cliffhanger of just going like, well, like, spit it out. <laughs> spit it out, Omni-Man. What is the secret? Like, like, we, like, I think if anybody needs the truth, I think it really is Mark uh, more so than Omni-Man. Like, I think we're going to find out that Omni-Man had found out something. Like, he probably had found out that, like, Cecil had um, made everybody, like, be a performer and puppets on a string for Omni-Man and even to the point of Mark this whole entire time. That everything that they knew were all lies and were all fabrications to benefit them in a way of which to like continue on this charade of keeping Omni-Man uh, and Invincible on this planet to where eventually Omni-Man won't go off uh, to return to his homeland uh, because he's had it so good on this planet is what I'm assessing is maybe going to be the story that maybe Omni-Man is going to give to his son. But then again, Omni-Man could really and truly just be a villain. Like, maybe Omni-Man the entire time was just like, dude, like, you know what, Mark? Like, I want to be a villain. Like, I've been wanting, I've been, like, I've been wanting to be a villain all along. Like, I came here to conquer this planet, and, like, that's, that's what I've been uh, wanting to do, and I think that it's the perfect time. Uh, like, I've gotten so uh, assimilated into, like, this place to have the best ability to be able to really strike hard at every single thing that... Like now, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take it all down. That there could be any number of roads of which that this uh, this show uh, continues to be interesting. So, with that said, yeah, there's a lot of paranoia or mystery going on with what is gonna happen the following episode. So, I think that this episode was just great. Um, like it kind of keeps you on pens and needles. Uh, the whole Mark revealing to Amber that he is invincible and her just going, well, yeah, I, I already knew that. Like, I've been knowing that for weeks, but you still lied. <laughs> it's like, wow, okay. Uh, like, dude, 
guess the line doesn't matter, the secrets, but it is what it is. So with that, I'm going to get out of here. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.